Anastasia, Book 1, Chapter 16 Flying Saucers, Nothing Extraordinary Then I asked her to show me an example of her knowledge of some technical subject. You want me to tell you how all the different machines of your world operate? The kind of thing our prominent scientists are only touching the fringes of? Why don't you make some great scientific discovery, let's say? That is what I have been doing for you the whole time you have been here. Not just for me, for the world of science. A discovery they would be prepared to recognize. Go ahead. Make a verifiable discovery in some technical, technical field like spaceships, the atom, automobile fuel, since you say it's all so simple. In comparison with what I have just shown you, those fields you mentioned are something like, to use a term from your language, the Stone Age. <laughs> That's perfect, something you consider primitive, but at least I'll be able to understand it. You can prove you're right and show evidence that your intelligence is superior to mine. Tell me, for example, what do you think of our airplanes and spaceships? Pretty close to perfect machines. No, they are altogether primitive. They only serve to show how primitive the technocratic path of development is. <laughs> that remark put me on my guard since I realized that either her conclusions were those of madwomen or she really knew far more than someone with an ordinary consciousness could ever imagine. I continued my questioning. What do you mean when you say our rockets and planes are primitive? Anastasia responded after a brief pause as though allowing time for her words to sink in. The functioning of all your machines Every single one of them is based on the energy of explosion. Not knowing any more efficient natural sources of energy, you resort to such primitive, awkward substitutes with incredible stubbornness. And even the destructive consequences of their use do not stop you. The range of your airplanes and rockets is simply laughable. According to the scale of the universe, they rise a wee tiny bit above the earth, and now this method has practically reached a ceiling. Do not you agree? But that is ridiculous. An exploding or burning substance propels some monstrous structure that you call a spaceship, and the greater part of this ship is designed precisely to solve this problem of population. population. And what might be an alternative principle of movement through the atmosphere? A flying saucer might be a good example, Anastasia responded. What? You know about flying saucers and their population systems? Of course I know. It is very simple and rational. I felt my throat go dry and tried to hurry her up. Tell me, Anastasia, quickly in a way I can understand. All right. Only do not get excited. It will be harder to understand when you are excited. The propulsion, the propulsion principle of a flying saucers, saucer is based on the energy of generating a vacuum. How so? Be more precise. You have a limited vac vocabulary, yet I am compelled to restrict myself to it so that you can understand me. Well, I'll add to it. I blurted out in agitation. I'll add words like jar, lid, tablet, air, and I began to quickly name all the words that just popped into my head at that moment and even let out a few swear words. Anastasia broke in. You need not um, bother. I already know all the words you can express yourself with. But there are still others. And besides that, there is whole different method of conveying information. If I use that, I could explain everything to you in a minute. As things stand now, it may take an hour or two. 
there is a lot and I really wanted to tell you about something else, something much more meaningful. No, Anastasia, tell me about flying saucers and their population methods. Tell me about energy carriers. Until I understand that, I shan't listen to anything else. All right, she acquiesced and then went on. An explosion occur occurs when a solid substance quickly changes under a definable influence into gaseous form or when in the course of a reaction, two gaseous substances evolve into something even lighter. Everyone, of course, understands this part. Yes, I replied. If powder is ignited, it becomes a smoke, and liquid fuel becomes gas. Yes, more or less. But if you or your people had purer thoughts, and consequently a knowledge of the functionings of nature, you would have long ago become aware that if there is a substance capable of instant explosion and through explosion transformation into another state, the opposite process must also hold true. In nature, there are living microorganisms that transform gaseous substances into solids. All plants do this in fact only at varying speeds and with varying degrees of firmness and solidity of the resulting substance. Take, take a look around you and you will see that plants take in liquid from the earth and breathe air. And then a process, and then process these into a hard and solid body. Let us say wood or something even harder and more solid like a nutshell or a plum stone. A microorganism smaller than the eye can see. Does this, does this with fantastic speed of feeding. It would seem on air alone. It is this same kinds, it is these same kinds of microorganisms that power flying saucers. They are like the micro cells in the brain only their operation has a very, very narrow focus. Their sole function is propulsion, but they carry out this function to perfection, and they can accelerate a flying saucer to one nineteenth the speed of the average modern earth dweller's thought. These microorganisms are located on the inner surface of the upper part of the flying saucer and positioned between its double walls which are set approximately three centimeters apart. The upper and lower surface of the outer walls are porous with micro-sized pinholes. The microorganisms draws, draw in all air through these pinholes, thereby creating a vacuum ahead of the saucer. The streams of air begin to con congel, congel even before contact with the saucer. And as they pass through the microorganisms, they are transformed into tiny spheres. Then these spheres are enlarged even more to approximately half a centimeters in diameter. They lose their firmness and slide down between the walls into the lower part of the saucer, where they again decompose into a gaseous substance. You can even eat them if you can do this before they decompose. What about the walls of the flying saucer? What are they made of? They, they are cultivated ground. How so? Why the surprise? Just give a little thought. You will figure it out. Many people cultivate a fungus in various kinds of containers. The fungus imbues the water in which it is placed with a pleasant, slightly acidic flavor and takes the shape of the container. This fungus is very similar to a flying saucer. It creates a double wall around itself. If another microorganism is added to its water, it produces a con con um, conjunct. But that so-called microorganism can be produ produced or rather generated by the power of the wall or the brain, 
much like a vivid concept of imagery. I mean, concept or imagery. Can you do this? I ask. Yes, but I do not have sufficient power of my own. The action of several dozen people having the same ability is required, and it takes about a year all, to, all told. And can one find on our earth everything necessary to make or grow, as you say, such a flying saucer in the microorganisms? Of course, one can. The earth has everything that the universe has. But how do you get the microorganism inside the walls of the saucer if they are so small you can't even see them? Once the upper wall is cultivated, it will attract and collect them in huge numbers, just as bees are attracted to cells. But this process also requires the collective will of several dozen, dozen people. In any case, what is the use of elaborating further if you cannot cultivate it for lack of people with the right kind of will, intelligence, and knowledge? Isn't there some way you could help? I could. So do it. I have already. What have you done? I was still perplexed. I told you how children should be raised. And I can tell you more. You must tell this to others. Many will understand and their children raised in this manner will have the intelligence, knowledge, and while permitting them to make not only a primitive flying saucer, but significantly more. Anastasia, how do you know so much about flying saucers? Does that too come through your communication with plants? They have landed here and I, well, I help the occupants repair their ship. Are they much smarter than us? Not at all. They have a long way to get to attain the level of man. They are afraid of us, afraid to approach people, even though they are very curious. At first, they were afraid of me. They trained their mental paralysis, paralysis on me, put on quite a show. They tried to frighten me, shock me. It was quite a challenge to calm them down and convince them I would only treat them with affection. Well, how can they be less smart than us if they can do things man can't do yet? What is so surprising about that, bees too make incredible structure out of natural materials, including whole ventilation and heating, heating system. But that does not mean they are superior to man in intelligence. In the universe, there is no one and nothing stronger than man except God.